coming up next on TITV. And if they'd quit acting like pimps and act like professionals, we wouldn't have this problem. Nick Saban not happy with NFL agents these days. Who's to blame, the players or the professionals? We'll discuss the agent issue. Plus, it's a combo that would strike fear into many opponents' hearts. Is there a possibility we'll see Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson in the backfield together in 2010? Those stories and more right now on Tider Insider Television. Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Gary Harris. And good evening, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of Tider Insider TV. Another year of SEC Media Days has come and gone. Everyone from reporters to coaches to fans packed the Winfrey Hotel in Hoover. Of course, no one was better dressed than Alabama linebacker Dante Hightower. More on that coming up later in the show as he was sporting the school colors. But right now, we are going to get into the program presented every week by Buffalo Rock. And let me pop the top on Ice cold Pepsi. Mm, it's going to be good. I'm Gary Harris, joined by Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. Coming up, we've got a full recruiting report, plus your phone calls and emails. But first, we begin with the agent issue. The topic dominated talk during last week's SEC Media Days. Our John Huddleston was there, and he tells us what Coach Saban and the rest of the SEC had to say. And if they quit acting like pimps and act like professionals, we wouldn't have this problem. So Alabama coach Nick Saban wasted no time lashing out at sports agents during the first round of SEC media days. The coach is upset with an ongoing investigation involving defensive end Marcel Darius. UA compliance officials are looking into whether Darius broke NCAA rules by attending an agent-related party earlier this summer. But Saban contends if any rules were broken, Darius would only be partially at fault. If somebody talked to Marcel Darius, which I don't know if they did or didn't, but if they did, they violated their own rules. Student-athlete agent interaction has been an ongoing problem for years. Schools like Alabama try to educate their athletes as to the rules. But Saban says coaches and school officials cannot always police their players. So th this is not a matter of sequestering the players. It's a matter of who should be more responsible, a 20-year-old player or a 40-year-old man who's supposed to be a professional. And while Saban might be the loudest talker, he's not the only one talking about the agent issue here at SEC Media Days. Everybody from players to other coaches to the commissioner has something to say on the issue. Conference Commissioner Mike Slive calls it a national problem and says change should come on the national level. The NCAA legislation is currently in place, as well-meaning as it is, is as much a part of the problem as it is part of the solution. While Slive is calling for a new policy, Saban and his coaching peers contend that any change on the NCAA's part would be meaningless unless the NFL steps up to make agents more accountable. That agent has to pay a heck of a price because the athlete's going to pay a heck of a price. And unless that happens, you have no chance. It's going to be a mockery. And they have to go to jail. And that's the only way to stop it. It's really unfortunate because these guys have nothing, they have nothing to lose. Alabama quarterback Greg McElroy's father is a Dallas Cowboys executive. Having grown up around the profession and now playing as an amateur, the QB has a unique perspective. I think the NFL has got to do something uh, when it comes to holding these agents liable. And until that happens, those in the college game say the professional problem will continue. I think if these guys were suspended for a year and couldn't collect fees uh, because of their suspension and not having a license, I don't think you'd see any of this stuff happening. In Hoover, John Huddleston, WVUA Sports. All right, Rodney, let's talk about Marcel Darius for just a moment. And, and first of all, let's be clear on this. He may not have done mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. In fact, you've talked with someone that knows Marcel well, and that person told you, Marcel says, in fact, he didn't do anything mm -hmm. wrong, and he feels like he's not going to miss any games. Yeah, and again, we'll have to find that out, you know, Gary. That's what the investigation's all about. And, you know, Marcel may not really realize, you know, maybe he did something wrong and didn't know it was wrong. But, uh, you know, according to him, he's done nothing wrong. He's talked to compliance, and uh, he thinks that uh, he's going to be proven innocent. Of course, Marcel Darius is part of this story, but the bigger issue is the agents and their involvement with college athletes. This is nothing new. I remember years ago when I was working in Mississippi and Derek McKee mm -hmm. got involved with Norby Walters, 
had to wind up leaving Alabama with years of eligibility left, even though he was going to come back for a senior season, killed that basketball season for Alabama. So this isn't a new problem. And you heard Urban Meyer and Nick Saban and other coaches talk about policing these agents, but it's easier said than done, let's be honest. It is, but I think they summed it up well, Gary. I mean, you know, when you look at what Nick Saban's comments, Urban Meyer, what did he say, send him to jail? And again, I think that's about the only way you're going to start you know, putting this stuff into perspective in terms of, you know, from an agent, uh, you know, slowing them down and what they do. And we don't want to exclude the players. They have been educated on this subject. They know the difference between right and wrong. So, obviously, players, when they do something that they shouldn't do with these agents, they have to bear responsibility as well. Yeah, I, I think so, Gary. And, again, you have to look at it. You know, you see a guy lose his entire – uh, you know, the rest of his career, whatever it might be, the season. I think some of it might be justified in some situations. But, uh, you know, again, I think, uh, as we mentioned, I think the agents are going to have to be held more accountable. And you really, what you really hate, though, is how the school can be penalized. And, uh, and something else I want to clear up, because there's so much misinformation that's out there. First of all, the NCAA, this is an eligibility matter, Marcel, Darius. The NCAA is not investigating Alabama. In fact, Alabama is conducting an internal investigation into what happened with Marcel Darius. And this has nothing, it, there's no, even if Marcel Darius were found to have had illegal contact with an agent, there's nothing that would happen to Alabama, correct? Well, again, you know, it, it, there, there's many ways it could, it could happen, Gary. As long as Alabama did not know, uh, and, and again, Marcel obviously has not played any, has not competed in any game, so Alabama could not be held accountable. Alabama has done everything they've needed to do in terms of turning in the information. It's not like they played him uh, knowing that he was ineligible but had not revealed it. Real quickly, Rodney, so Alabama does its internal investigation, then they turn those findings over to the NCAA. Is that basically how it works? Yeah, and I'm sure it's possible the NCAA could, you know, look into it even further, which they do in it some, some other schools. All right, good enough. Well, the agent talk uh, was the hot topic discussed last week at Media Days, but it wasn't the first thing that was on Nick Saban's mind. I just want to make sure that everybody here understands that this is 2010. Uh, almost everything I hear about is based on last year's team. Um, last year's team did a fantastic job in winning a national championship and having 22 graduates in the national championship game. But we're looking out the, 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 the forward uh, windows of what's happening now with our team. This team has to uh, develop our own identity. Uh, we got to gel and connect collectively as a unit. And, uh, everybody has to get better individually. And here's what the media thinks. Uh, the voting, of course, came in on Friday and uh, status quo. Alabama picked to win the West and be your overall SEC champion. Who will they beat in that championship game? Well, the media believes, again, it will be Florida. Florida picked to win the East. Interestingly enough, Vanderbilt picked to finish last but did get one first place vote. And in the West, Ole Miss picked to finish last, got three first place votes. Well, here's an interesting idea, and it's an idea that people are tossing around. How dangerous would Alabama be with Mark Ingram, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Trent Richardson, the outstanding soon-to-be sophomore, in the backfield at the same time? It's a scenario that, as I said, has been tossed around. And last week, I asked Ingram what he thought about the idea. I think that would be interesting to see both of us on the field at the same time. Uh, it would just give us more weapons. We have a lot of weapons on our team. And, uh, that would just give teams more of a headache to have both of us on the field at the same time. But um, in the end, that's uh, the coach's call, coach's decision, and uh, we're, we're going to do what they say because they know what's best. Rodney, as we look at the numbers for this dynamic duo, Alabama has been under Nick Saban and Jim McElwain, basically a one-back offense, but the possibilities are interesting on what you could do with Ingram and Richardson in the game at the same time. Yeah, and I think you may see some of that, Gary, but again, I think we, we won't deviate much from what we've seen in the past. I, I think you're going to see that dual role be interesting to see how the carries are split this year. Yeah, it will be. Of course, one way, that one possibility for getting him in the game at the same time is the Wildcat, yep. where Ingram takes the snap and Richardson's behind him. We saw that a few or times vice versa. last yeah. year or vice versa, so it is a possibility, and certainly I think Alabama coaches like that idea of floating around out there. It's yet something else that defensive coordinators have to prepare for, and Lord knows they got a lot to prepare for when they're looking at Alabama's offense. Yeah, and you know, we saw in the Auburn game, we even saw Mark Ingram try to throw a pass. It didn't go well for him that day, but wouldn't be surprised to see that again. They are two incredible backs. Some feel, including people that vote on it, that they're the two best backs in the SEC. They're both 
first team all SEC might be preseason. The best, might be the two best on one team in the country. Yeah, it's a, it's a dynamic duo indeed. Well, still to come on TITV, Decision Day is coming for one Alabama football prospect. Will he choose the Tide? We'll have the latest. Plus, we'll be taking your phone calls and getting to your emails. The number to get in touch with is 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or email us at your convenience, TITV at WVUATV.com. Plus, Greg McElroy wants to take up residence in Oxford. And we're not talking about anything related to Ole Miss or the city in Northeast Alabama. We'll explain. Stay tuned. You're watching the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. The one, the only, Tider Insider TV presented by Buffalo Rock Modeling Company.